Okay, so I said I would do a video um, about the Xbox Games Showcase on Thursday. Today it's Thursday night. Game Showcase happened today. Um, I don't know, maybe it's because I speak as a fan of Xbox, or I don't know. Like, I watch these events, I go into them with high expectations. Like, I get hyped up and, you know, really excited for anything that's got to do with, you know, new games, movies, um, all that kind of stuff, like media stuff, I'm really into it, and especially if it's something gaming related, especially if it's something Xbox related, especially when it's a new generation about to start. And so I go in pretty excited, pretty hyped up, and watch the showcase. Um, gameplay for Halo Infinite looks freaking amazing. I mean, graphics and technical stuff aside, it's got this, I'm going to assume, semi-open world. I had predicted I, well, to one of my friends the night before um, that it was either going to be open world or like large hub areas with gameplay, kind of like the, the recent Tomb Raider games, which I loved. Um, either way, just seeing this like expansive world that it seems like you can kind of pick and choose what at least the secondary like what objectives you want to take on at what time how you want to approach them uh, that sort of thing pretty awesome to me um, and then add in the, the, the it seems like a return to Halo 2 um, core gameplay, or even the original Halo, but definitely Halo 2, um, and with refinements of current gaming. Uh, I'm pretty pretty impressed by it, I think it looks really cool. And then they do this neat like moment, like kind of cinematic moment, with the, the alien talking to Chief, but I really felt like it was kind of like a type of player, so he's talking about, you know bear your teeth Spartan and all this stuff and basically prepare for, you know, prepare for glory and epic combat and all this sort of thing. So here I am like, yes, we're back to like Master Chief being the focus of the story where we got like the core gameplay mechanics look very core Halo um, and incredible graphics. I mean, and the thing is you're watching a watching a video stream of something you're not even seeing it live I can only imagine what something like that will look like um, when you're actually playing on a 4k TV and it's running at 60 frames you know HDR and all that anyways really cool oh and then there's this grapple thing that was that was pretty badass like I like how they made him look up at his objective and then just instead of following some preordained path you know which again not horrible. I'm not opposed in any way to semi, you know, to linear games. I think that when you're telling a, a cinematic story, sometimes and sometimes that's important. But considering what they're doing with this game, giving you the mobility, you know, the the way to choose your own path, seeing him shoot that grapple up to that like ledge with that the bridge above it and, and zip up there, and then not only that, but using it on enemies. I don't know. It, I think it was pretty awesome. Uh, so from the outset of the show, I was like, yes, this is fucking cool. I'm excited. And uh, from there, um, we saw... What, what, what was it? I'm just going to go with the things I remember, because that's usually what matters. There's a lot of cool stuff in between, and I'm sure I'll remember over time, like, when it comes to the forefront. But Grounded does look pretty cool. Um... I'll probably try it when it comes to game preview, depending on if you have to like what you have to pay for it. I'm not a huge proponent of paying for incomplete games and waiting for them to be finished. That's just not my style. Um, but anyways, it does look like a neat concept. It's neat to see something interesting come out of one of the developers that Microsoft bought. Um, Avowed, though. I, I thought it was pretty awesome because, oh, before Avowed, the Outer Worlds expansion, Outer Worlds is an incredible Fallout-esque uh, sci-fi RPG, and if you like any of that sort of thing, 
If you like Fallout, if you like Borderlands style humor, but a little more toned down, uh, anything cool in sci-fi, Outer Worlds is a fantastic game. You should really try it out. Worth supporting a great developer. And there's the first DLC for that's coming out. It looks awesome. Um, I will definitely be buying it. Apparently there's going to be two DLCs. I, I'll be buying it unless, of course, because I have Game Pass Ultimate, it's, it's quite possible that they do some kind of thing where they give that to us. Um, but then everybody knew that Obsidian was working on some sort of big time RPG and they showed this teaser for a game called Avowed and if it's anything like it looks and I trust Obsidian at this point especially now that they've got uh, you know the backing of Microsoft and, and the big money behind them um, that could be a legitimate competitor to Elder Scrolls uh, we'll have to see more detail come out but I'm actually pretty excited um, for that um, Avowed looked great and then the medium, that's one I will definitely be following. I love any kind of horror, especially psychological horror. Uh, they showed off this neat thing where it was like dual reality gameplay, where they're, they're showing that the game literally has both realities of the story playing out at the same time. And I'm not sure if the player, like, chooses... Ooh, long day. I'm sorry. I'm not sure if the player chooses when they switch back and forth, or if the game does based on like triggered actions or something. Either way, it looks really awesome. Looks pretty gruesome. Looks pretty like sometimes just a mess with your head. I'm all about that. Um, and then there was a couple other. What was it? Uh, the Gunk or something like that. Cool little uh, action adventure game. Um, Psychonauts 2. Uh, I don't know anybody that's ever played Psychonauts that didn't love it. Great, like, cult following to that game. Hopefully Psychonauts 2 gets a pretty decent stage for its release. Kind of neat to see Jack Black involved, uh, singing a song from it. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm playing some Elite Dangerous and decided to explore this crater. There's this big mountain in the center of it. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go check that out. Um, Anyways, Psychonauts 2 looks really awesome. Looks like Psychonauts, but on acid. Uh, literally, like the, the, the way it's... <laughs> the art style, the way the uh, things are playing out, it's pretty darn psychedelic. Um, and then, let's see. From Psychonauts 2... There was... Oh, Forza Motorsport 8. I love the Forza games, all of them, whether it's uh, Motorsport or Horizon. Very excited for that. That should be great. I'm assuming that's going to be like uh, sometime. They, they said it was early in production, um, and it was an in-game demonstration. Or in-engine demonstration, sorry. I'm going to assume that that's coming out uh, next fall, but that's fine, because I'll be definitely looking forward to that. Um, the announcement that games like Forza Horizon 4 and, and Sea of Thieves and many others are going to get uh, Series X upgrades for free, of course. And then there was there was some things we didn't get to see. Uh, they, they were like, hey, you know, you'll notice that there's a couple studios we didn't see games from. That's because we're going to show them later this year. So we did not see anything from the initiative, and that's going to be a big deal because... Like, we have no idea. Like, they, they, there's no, been, not been any leaks. There's been rumors. There, there's a lot of rumors. A lot of people believe that it's a new, like, a reboot of the Perfect Dark series, which I would be all over that. Like, a major... Well, they, they call it a 4A studio, but which I'll take it, whatever Microsoft wants to call it. They're putting a lot of money. They've hired some of the, the, some of the cream of the crop talent out there from, you know, developers that have... That, Top developers that have worked on games like Red Dead Redemption, God of War, the, the Tomb Raider series. So they've got some really good blood in there. And it, whatever they're making is going to be a big deal. I'm hoping we get a tease of that later this year. Um, I 
and then uh, Hellblade 2, they didn't show us, they told us basically it's, it's still being worked on, there's going to be developer diaries, check those out. And then of course, we get to the end, and everybody's waiting for it. It's like the worst kept secret for years now. Um, they say, we do have one last you know, trailer for you. And it comes up on screen, it says Playground Games, and immediately I knew it was Fable. Uh, and I'm so excited about that. Playground Games is a great developer with the Forza series. They've done an incredible job, and everybody knew this was coming. So it's not a surprise, but it's, it's a welcome confirmation. <laughs> Fable is coming. Hopefully sooner than later, because it's been so many years in the works. Like, God, it feels like it's been four or five years now. It might be like three, but still, it seems like such a long time. Either way, I hope it's sooner than later. Xbox could really use it. I mean, that would be a great one. Especially if it, it's as good as it's hinted at or as teased, you know, like... Lionhead was a great studio back in the day, but they were kind of losing their touch, and I think Playground Games will do an incredible job with it, so it could be like a really big deal rewatch for this franchise. Um, that was very exciting to see. Anyways, so... I watch all this, I'm sitting here going, wow, this is really cool. You know, like I said, there's all kinds of little stuff in between, of course, that was cool too, uh, smaller games and stuff, uh, that I will be excited about. Oh, uh, Stalker 2, that was one. I remembered hearing about the Stalker back in the day, but I never actually really knew what it was. Uh, apparently it's like this kind of horror shooter that takes place in... Or, or in and around Chernobyl, uh, and it looks amazing. I, I'm really excited for that. But anyways, so what what we saw today was 22 console launch exclusives, which you know that's fine, and five brand new games that had not previously been, I guess you could say, like they had been announced for Xbox Series X. And we saw the Halo Infinite gameplay. We saw in-engine demos of stuff, and of course a lot of cinematic trailers, just to be like, hey, there is cool stuff on the way. Like, there is, there is good games. There, there's stuff happening since we've bought these studios and everything. So I'm very excited. I enjoyed it. I thought it was really cool. There's only so much you can do with these online presentations. That's what I, I don't think people realize. Like... The, this would have all been a big presentation on a stage instead of an hour of just kind of running through the trailers it would have been like 90 minutes there this E3 was uh, this E3 was supposed to be their biggest ever you know and so I had a feeling that they had they had a presentation a really big deal presentation set up to show off these games talk about them a little bit more than we actually like see the little trailers and stuff and then of course the the stuff that had been shown in may as well that everybody got, got all upset about which again i don't know why it was just a third party here's games um but either way it was really cool i enjoy it and then I go and I'm like, okay, I'm going to check out and see what everybody else thought. And so I start searching YouTube, and it's all just bad. It's all just everybody knocking the presentation. It's so bad. It was horrible. Microsoft's done. It's like, why? What was so bad about it? Like, I don't understand. Like, there, again, we have to have different expectations for these online presentations. You know, um... It's not going to be the same. It's not going to have the same kind of production value, I suppose. Or, it, it, I don't know. It's frustrating to, to continually watch uh, people outside the community and then even inside the community just, just never be pleased. You can never make them happy. And so, like, at a certain point, you just got to stop trying. Just make good stuff. Because normal people will, will enjoy it. Normal people will get excited for it. 
I guarantee you when I go to work and I start talking, most of my coworkers are PlayStation fans. And they're all about, you know, stupid Spider-Man games, and Last of Us, and Ghost of Tsushima, and all that kind of stuff. It's like, fine. But the funny thing is, most of them, I guarantee you, they're going to see this and be like, dude, that Halo gameplay, you know, or, or what about, uh, how about Fable coming back, or, you know, whatever. There, there's going to be excitement. And then, of course, you go on the internet and things are totally different. So I've come to this point where I just, I try not to care at all what the internet thinks. Because it seems like people are stupid on the internet. Just like politics, just like everything else, when you get out of the echo chambers of Twitter and YouTube and Facebook and you go to the real world, real people enjoyed the rise of Skywalker. Real people enjoyed your, your video game presentation and they think it looked really cool. Real people uh, aren't worried about social justice bullcrap every day. You know, so... Anyways, all that being said, I think that the Series X is going to have a really cool launch. Uh, yeah, I know that Sony's got Spider-Man and stuff, like whoopty freaking do the same game that just came out two years ago or whatever. Um, yeah, it's, it's, everybody likes to talk about how, X, oh, it's just always Halo Gear Sports or Halo Gear Sports. Like, yeah, well, it's always just God of War, Spider-Man. Uh, well, for a while it was Uncharted. Now it's become, you know, Last of Us were with, like, some other game thrown in in between. But that's how Xbox has always done it, too. It's just that Xbox has more of a focus on shooters, and that's fine. But people are also elitists, so they can't understand how other people might enjoy something they don't, and therefore it's inferior. So, anyways, go check it out if you haven't. Um, the stream was in 1080p. It was definitely more impressive to, uh, which of course I watched live, but it was definitely more impressive to uh, to check out the... Re the, re the recordings, you know, the clips later. So go to the Xbox or YouTube channel, find the clips. If you can watch them in 4K on your TV or your computer or something, definitely do that. Because if it's not going to do them justice to watch them like on your phone in 720 or even in 1080 or something. Go check it out. It was really cool.